What's going on everybody? Chef Anthony here bringing you the first in what will hopefully be a very nice series of uh, food news. We're going to call this the GLHF Supply Drop. So every week I'm going to scour the internet to find some interesting food news, some food stories, maybe some trends that are hitting the market, and then maybe share a recipe or two with you guys. Uh, leave comments down below on what kind of recipes you want to see. Uh, we'll maybe switch things up with the seasons and just kind of um, play it by ear. It'll be fun. It's what you do in a kitchen, right? Yeah. So, let's get things started. So you really can't talk food news without talking about McDonald's. And that's where we're going to start this week. Uh, over in uh, Japan, actually, McDonald's there is going to roll out a brand new burger starting November 2nd. It's going to be the Pork Katsu Burger. Now this is going to be a pork patty stuffed with cheese and then deep fried. Sounds kind of delicious. I mean... I'd eat one or two. They top the burger with cabbage and some mayo, and that's it. So kind of similar to a, a fish fillet almost, just with pork. Now, check out this commercial. This guy is loving this thing. Like, and then the other guy in this video, eh, I mean, I don't know if he's confused or if he's scared, but either way, it's an awkward one. It's an awkward one. Anyway. The pork katsu burger is going to run for about 390 yen, um, depending on the exchange rate, it's about 350 to kind of put it into perspective. Um, watching this made me think of what other kind of interesting items fast food places have rolled out in Japan, so I did a quick look around, and this is what we found. So we're going to start things off with Wendy's, where they've decided to roll out uh, lobster burgers, because why not? Starting off, they roll out their Surf and Turf Burger, which uh, uses real lobster. I was shocked to read that. Actual claw meat, claw and knuckle meat in the burger. Uh, surf and Turf, and then also a lobster and caviar. I mean, that's fucking fancy. So these are going to run you about $13 a pop. Moving on from that, we hit Burger King. Uh, I know recently, here in the States, Burger King started to roll out hot dogs again, because I guess they used to do that. Um, well, Burger King out there does it now, except they call them King Dogs, and they are huge. And just to show you how far back I went in my research, uh, many moons ago, Burger King rolled out the Windows 7 Whopper. How old was I when 7 came out? The thing about this Windows 7 burger, aside from being 7 patties of meat, was the way that they sold it. So every day, the first 30 people only paid 777 yen. 5 bucks, maybe 6 bucks. But after that first 30 people, they doubled the price to about 1440. 13, 14 bucks. Kind of crazy. And the last gem that I came across was actually two fast food places that decided to join forces. Moss Burger and Mr. Donut. And their bastard child was the Moss Burger French Cruller and Round and Round Chorizo Sausage. Now, round and round? Yeah, because it looks exactly like it does in this picture. It is a perfect round chorizo sausage link. Uh, amazing. It ran for about four bucks, and what's nice is that when you ordered one, you actually got what it looked like in the picture. Can't say that for anything I've ever had anywhere else. So now that we've satiated our appetites, it's time to quench our thirsts, and for that, we go to Starbucks. Isn't that where everyone goes? What we're going to talk about is nitrogen-infused teas, or nitro teas. Uh, this is just your standard tea, whatever you want, that's been infused with nitrogen. Now, the reason I mentioned Starbucks earlier is because they've kind of started this trend with their cold brew nitro coffee. We're going to talk about that in a second, by the way. Now, while Starbucks is not actually selling these at the moment, there are rumors that Tivana is going to start carrying these nitrogen teas. But if rumors aren't doing it for you and you need something right now and you just so happened to be in the Los Angeles area, head over to B-Suite where they are running two flavors of nitrogen teas, a green matcha tea and then also a Thai iced tea. Again, what the nitrogen does is really takes out a little bit of the bitterness and adds a sweetness without any extra sugar or dairy products. On a quick tangent, going back to Starbucks and their drinks, uh, did you know that there was a drink that Starbucks does not sell in Venti because there's too much caffeine? Funny enough, it's actually their nitro cold brew coffee. So this is only sold in a tall size and smaller because one serving 
has more than the recommended daily amount of caffeine, about 400 milligrams. I mean, I enjoy coffee because it's a little bit of a pick-me-up, but holy hell. So we've had a little something to eat. We have a nice coffee to relax us and keep us up all night. Now let's talk about our diet. Now I am not a vegetarian or a vegan. I stick to eating whatever I really want. So yeah. So if I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian, why would I necessarily want to cover something about that diet? Well, my friends, because it's about to get weird. So I did a little bit of digging and found out that vegans and vegetarians might have a very, very interesting connection to aliens. That's right. Let's go down this rabbit hole together. So, cosmic mythologist, global alchemist, and medical astrologist Laura Magdalene Eisenhower believes that a vegan and vegetarian diet could actually attract alien activity to our world. Does that last name sound a little bit familiar? Laura Magdalene Eisenhower is actually the great-granddaughter of the late president Dwight D. Eisenhower. And apparently the alien UFO conspiracy theory stuff is something that runs in that family because there was a huge conspiracy theory running around Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1953 where he supposedly signed a treaty with extraterrestrials when he took office. There is a lot of information about this online. Holy hell. Give it a look. So according to Laura, vegan and vegetarian diets are a more pure and cleaner energy that we're taking into our body. She goes on to say that when dealing with eating animals, it is a heavier density for our physical bodies to process, literally making us heavier. And when eating veggies, we are lighter, so we can connect easier with higher beings. Now don't worry, you don't have to be a vegan or a vegetarian to experience sky beings, but it helps, supposedly. Now this article, which I will link in the description, goes on to cover a lot more facts. Uh, Laura Eisenhower also believes that extraterrestrials have already invaded Earth, uh, and that can be evident in things like GMOs in food. It's really weird, to be honest. I tried reading through it and I couldn't. In the interview she does, she also gives us tips on how to not be eaten by reptilian creatures. Now, there was one quote of hers that I kind of got into and understood just a little bit, and let me read through it here. Just be conscious and end agreements that aren't healthy for you and start to inspire yourselves to have a healthy relationship with food and people. I'm completely on board with that. Really just pay attention to what you put into your body to be healthy and pay attention to the people that you surround yourself with, again, to just be healthy and happy. She then kind of flips the script and goes on to say, the better we eat and the more we take care of ourselves, the more we can recognize the benevolent forces out there versus those energies out there that wish to enslave or compromise us. Yeah, it's pretty deep. I Check out the link below. Check out the whole interview. It's intense. And I mean, wow. But don't worry if none of this makes sense to you. Uh, Laura says that your diet is crucial in order to have this level of clarity. So not all people know this. So me, seeing as how I eat meat and I'm not a vegan, I apparently cannot process this. So please, any vegans or vegetarians out there watching this, shed some light on this for me. Help me out here. Show me the clarity that you have that I don't. Before I leave you guys today, I want to ask you a question. Are you lonely and hungry? Have you ever wanted to find that special someone at a taco shop? Well, now you can. Thanks to the software engineers over at Zeusk, we now have the Burrito app. It's a dating app that will pair you with your perfect match solely based on your burrito preferences. I'm not making that up. It apparently allows you to find a date based on 32 different burrito factors. So I know what you're thinking. There are already so many different dating apps out there. There's ones for Christians, and farmers, and Pokemon Go players, and Jewish people, and my god, the list goes on and on. And my question is, with all these dating apps out there, why am I so lonely? <laughs> uh, engineer Rob Flanagan explained that today's daters are more sophisticated than their predecessors. They're tired of matching on trivial things and are looking for some more meaningful way to connect. They believe that they've found that way, and it's with burritos.
But just hold on a second before you go run to grab your phone and download this. Yes, yes, it was a joke, everybody. This was done by Zeus as an April Fool's joke. They actually rolled this out, but they took it down after a couple days. And I'm still lonely. That's gonna do it for me, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below on if you liked it, what do you think I should do different, anything you wanna say, I'm all ears. I plan to do more of these, and of course, I'll start doing some recipes here at the end. Uh, as I said earlier, let me know what you guys wanna hear about, and let me know what you guys wanna eat, and I'll tailor it to you. It's what I'm here for, for you. Please be sure to like the video, share it with all your friends, and I will see you all next time.